Hello folks, I am so excited I have got a new telescope to play with, so let's not waste any time, let's see what's in the box. Can't wait to open this up. All right, another box. Solar goggles. Wow, lots of stuff in here. And what this is, if you, you already probably know from the title of the video, it is the Daystar Solar Scout. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know I love solar imaging. I, I can't get enough of it. It's so much fun. And this is um, it's a, a dedicated 60 mm refractor with a quark on the end. So you can't take this apart. It's all in one. And um, I think this actually came out in the second half of last year um, before or after I bought my cork because at only uh, six ninety five, dollars had this existed back when I bought the, when I was ready for solar imaging, I probably would have gotten this first because, you know, it, at that price, you know, it, it, it's not bad to see if you really want to get into solar imaging and uh, I can't wait to try this out. And, um, by the way, since uh, I already own a quark, this is really, I view this now as complementary to that. My quark with my AR-102 telescope gets me really up close on the sun. Um, this dedicated solar scope um, at 60 mm and a 930 focal length. I think, I think it's going to get me the whole disc, and that's what I always wanted, the whole disc. Because uh, I like to try different things, and what I, my, my real goal, this is kind of a challenge, is to get the disc actually rotating. It, it's a big effort, but that's what I really want to do. And what this has is, uh, um, it even has a, it has a, a, a solar finder here, a, a, even though the sun is big, um, I wouldn't try finding the sun manually without a solar finder. A solar finder, you, you, you'll just find it instantly. And I've been reading up on this. Now, at, at 930 focal length and uh, the 60 the mm aperture, I think um, it's going to be very close. See, my, my, the, the camera I use right now for solar imaging is the ASI 183. And I view that as a specialized camera to get you in close and maybe for solar imaging for this anyway um, it, it might get me in too close it's going to be a really tight fit um, so anyway uh, what I want to do now though is uh, I want to actually attach my camera to this and see how that all fits together give me a second I'll be right back Hey, I am back and I've got my ASI 183 camera here and um, you'll see right here it does have a tilt adapter on it and uh, if, if you're familiar with uh, solar imaging you'll you'll know that a lot of times you may get Newton's rings uh, a sort of a, a ringed pattern going across the Sun and uh, how to get rid of that is with uh, a tilt adapter or um, you can do flats. Um, I made a video on how to do solar flats and they are effective at getting rid of Newton's rings. Um, I have this tilt adapter on it though because sometimes I actually forget to take flats. I like to take flats um, every session and uh, if I ever forget <laughs> it's not a total loss because I do have this to get rid of Newton's rings but 
I did make a video on how to do flats. So um, as long as you don't forget, um, follow my video and, and you'll be fine. I wouldn't be worried about Newton's rings. And so let me show you how this would go on. Um, what I can do is I can unscrew this adapter here because I already have this adapter when I bought my cork. It's already attached onto this. So let me screw this on. Come on. There we go. All right, that's it. Um, I'm good to go for solar imaging. And I mentioned one of my projects is to get the rotation of the sun. That, that's a big project. But uh, there's a lot of other uses um, I can think of this. And one thing is um, if there's activity going across the whole sun, that's a really good case for wanting to capture the whole disk. Um, or uh, if you want to do the uh, capture the ISS transit. Um, or uh, there's going to be a Mercury transit in November. Okay, and I'm... I've been waiting for that. I just hope it's not cloudy. And I'm not sure how small Mercury is um, during that transit. I'm hoping I can capture it with the whole disk. If not, I'll probably have to use my quark in that case. And of course, for a, a solar eclipse, and I think there's a, a partial solar eclipse. Gosh, I know it's going to be viewable in most of North America. I don't know if it's next year or the year after. So that's another case for this. So. I'm glad I've got both of these now, and ideally, <laughs> I would love to mount this on top of my AR-102 so I would have the quark and the AR-2 and then this mounted on top so I could have my whole solar setup in one. Um, if I can't do that, um, I can just mount this easily with the base here onto my ABX. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know I could screw this 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 mount, this base off here, but I wouldn't do it without asking Daystar first because I don't know if these screws are, are holding anything else on the inside. I, I don't want to mess with it. I wouldn't do that. And the focus for this, by the way, um, is right here, right in the middle. I don't know how far it goes. I'll find out. So I'm not going to have an electronic focuser. And I don't know how critical an electronic focuser really is when you're when you're all the way back on the sun. I know it's critical for me anyway because I do animations and I need to be imaging the sun for two or three hours at a time. Um, but if you're doing single shots, I don't think an electronic focuser is all that important. And when you're doing the full disc, you're pretty far out. I don't know. If you really lose focus as often as you might when you're really in close and you can see the details and you can definitely see you when you're that close and you can see focus issues. So um, I can't wait. We'll find out. And what I'm thinking is um, when I try this out, I might do a live session. That, that would be a lot of fun. A lot of people uh, seem to enjoy when I did that live session with the Quark and I had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, I might want to do a live session on the full disc next time. We'll see how that goes. And uh, uh, I would, uh, <laughs> I've had a good run. Um, uh, whenever I buy new equipment, I can usually test it out right away. I, that jinx of buying new equipment in bad weather never seems to apply to me until now. We've got a week of bad weather coming up, so I don't know when I'm going to be able to use this. Um, but um, don't go away yet. I want to show you something else. Hang on. Okay, I am on Daystar's website, and this is the, the new scope I have. And what I want to show you is how it's going to fit with my camera. So, um, I am... Now, here's Astronomy Tools. I've shown you this website before. I love this website. I'm going to go into FOB Calculator. And this is really great if you want to compare your camera with telescopes. You can just check out your field of view. It's just a, a great website to do, uh, to use. And let's see, um, uh, the focal length. Uh, there's the bundle. Uh, Six ninety-five for the scope and eight seventy-five for the bundle. But uh, there it is. That's the nine thirty is the focal length. I want to punch that in. I'm going to do custom scope. Nine thirty, unless. 
unless the solar scout was actually in here. Do they have Daystar in here? If not, they should. Huh. That's okay. I don't need it. Uh, 930 focal length. And just to make sure, 60 mm is the aperture. Oh, I want to be in imaging mode. Now I'm going to select my camera. And like I said, though, the ASI to me is a specialized kind of camera. It really gets you in close, whereas the 1600, it's really a, the ASI 1600, really a good camera for either my wide field or my big refractor and even this solar scope. Let me show you what's going on here. I want to select, a, let's just pick the sun here and let's um, add to view. <clears throat> All right. That is cutting it close with the ASI 183. Now, I don't know how accurate this really is, but I hope it's dead on because then I can fit the sun exactly with my camera. Now, that would be awesome. I'm about as close as I can get, although it might be tough to keep my st the sun perfect and then have auto stacker stack it without cropping and losing information. But if I really want to hold this for sure, um, my other camera is the 1600, and let's add that to the view. And then you can see my 1600, it's yellow box, easily, easily. I'll, I'll fit the, the full disc with this, with this scope. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping the ASI 183 will give me what I want. So, um, that's all I got for now. Thanks for listening, folks, and uh, we'll see how this goes. See you later.